when a stone capable of fulfilling any wish falls to Earth, a group of young people must join forces to stop the adults from destroying the planet. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Shorts, from 2009. In the countryside of Texas, there is a town called Black Falls, which was built to house the employees of Black SA, a technology company that is developing the Black Box, an artifact capable of performing various functions. At the product launch meeting, the company's president, Carbonus Black, congratulates the employees on the product's good performance. Despite this, the man says that imitations are taking over the market and two employees suggest some improvements, saying that they are investing money in functions that nobody uses anymore. When he is contradicted, Mr. Black does not think twice before dismissing the two and all their relatives, ordering them to vacate their homes immediately. Acting as if nothing had happened, the man continues talking about the new update and asks for the results report from the leaders of Team A and B, saying that whoever has the best result will become a partner and the loser will be fired along with his family. As they are married, Jane and Alan Thompson ask how this is going to work out and Mr. Black says it doesn't matter, stating that they should do their best. In the Thompson household, youngest Toe wakes up early in the morning and starts his hygiene routine with the device. With everything done, he eats breakfast and goes to school, where he is always greeted by Cole and Helvetica Black, Carbonus's children. Along with the two of them, there's always a group of other students who give Toe hell by throwing him into the garbage cans. Before that happens, the boy says he knows why they always mess with him and claims that Helvetica is madly in love, because they are both outcasts and wear braces. Despite the statement, the girl says she hates Toe and Cole sticks his head in the garbage can. When he finally manages to get out, the youngest Thompson goes into the living room where he greets the fish in the aquarium, his only friend. As Toe walks to his chair, another student called Lugie starts to present his science work, but he does extremely badly and forgets everything he was supposed to say. When she realizes this, the teacher asks if Lugi didn't do the work and he replies that he did, but that the assignment was eaten by a crocodile. Obviously, the teacher doesn't believe him and writes down him grade, calling the next student to present the work. Helvetica then uses the black box to present her research on wasps, stating that the stronger females show aggressive behavior towards the weaker males, while staring at toe. Continuing, Helvetica says that scientists have observed that some females force the males to stick their heads into the cells of the hive. Wanting to reproduce this effect, the girl shows Toe a trash can and asks if he can volunteer, making him stand on his head in the trash for the second time that day. After school, Toe is sitting on the stairs when Lugi comes to talk to him and offers him some chocolate bars. Suddenly, Lugi's older brothers show up and start dragging him home, causing dozens of chocolate bars to jump out of his pockets. Although he finds it bizarre, Toe just walks home while reflecting on his difficulty in making friends. Halfway there, Cole and the other boys show up and start running after him. As the boy runs to a tree, the group of bullies start throwing stones at Toe, only stopping when he faints. After the others leave, the boy falls out of the tree right onto a rainbow-colored stone. As soon as he touches the object, Toe hears a voice telling him to make a request. Although he found it strange, the boy asked to join a group of friends and four tiny UFOs appeared in the sky, accompanying him home. At the door, Toe puts everyone in his backpack and leaves them in the kitchen, but soon the ETs come out of the object and start following the TV recipes, cooking up a real feast. In the dining room, Toe is talking to his parents when his sister Stacy arrives angry after a fight with her boyfriend. During the conversation, the family starts to hear sounds coming from the kitchen and Toe runs to see what's going on, eating the feast prepared by the aliens. After the meal, the aliens tidy up Toe's room and align his teeth, removing his braces. In the youngest's room, Stacy is looking for her keyring and ends up finding the magic stone while arguing with her ex-boyfriend. During the conversation, the girl starts offending her ex and says that she wanted him to grow up, which makes his body stretch. As they're on a call, Stacy doesn't realize what's going on and just hangs up on the guy, dropping the stone straight away. The next morning, Toe goes to class with his alien's friends, friends, who carry him to the entrance. There, the boy asks the aliens to stay hidden and walks to the entrance, but is noticed by Helvetica and her gang, who begin to chase him. In the corridor, the girl manages to stop the young man and threatens to snatch the braces from Toe, only to be surprised to discover that he is no longer using it. In class, the boy talks to the aliens inside his backpack, but Helvetica notices and starts making fun of him, saying that he's talking to imaginary friends. When class starts, the aliens inside the backpack play heavy metal music on the black box, interrupting the teacher. After taking a beating, Toe tries to retrieve the device while the aliens pull it back, causing the black box to fly into Helvetica's face. In revenge, the girl goes to the aquarium and takes Toe's fish, threatening to eat it while the aliens steal Lugi's chocolates. When Helvetica puts the animal in her mouth, 
Toe jumps on top of her, causing them both to fall out of the window. After putting the fish in the aquarium, the UFOs fly into the field and start attacking Cole and the other bullies, causing one of them to crash face first into a tree. After the confusion, Toe and Helvetica have to wear plaster casts on both arms and become increasingly close, as well as starting a friendship with the strange Lugie, who is actually the cause of all the confusion. Because the day before, Lug and Laser, Lugie's brothers, were taking advantage of the storm to play video games. After spending so much time indoors, Lugie gets sick and asks his brothers to play outside. While Lug is talking about the storm, the magic stone begins to fall from the sky, being struck by several bolts of lightning and leaving a large crater. As soon as the stone hits the ground, the storm dissipates and the day is completely clear. Before leaving, Lugi leaves a black box in electronic babysitting mode to look after his little sister. With that done, the trio of brothers set off on a treasure hunt when they notice a rainbow forming next to the house. Wanting the pot of gold, the three run to the beginning of the rainbow, where they find the magic stone. As soon as he takes the object in his hand, Lugi hears that voice and decides to use his first request to have an inexhaustible supply of chocolate, which explains why chocolate bars were pouring out of his pocket at school. In the next request, Lugi asks for a fortress surrounded by a moat full of crocodiles and snakes. Wanting to make their requests, Lug and Laser try to take the stone from their younger brother, which causes the object to fall into the pit. With no options, the boys climb down the canyon and start looking for the stone, finding it on top of a rock. As he approaches to pick it up, Lugi realizes that the stone is actually a crocodile that almost devours his hand. Despite escaping unscathed, the boy loses the magic stone to the alligator who swallows it. With his older brother surrounded by Nodges, Lugi throws himself into the crocodile's mouth and manages to retrieve the magic stone, escaping unharmed and asking the snakes to disappear at the last second. Now that Laser is safe, Lugi realizes that the crocodile has eaten his homework, and that he has also made a request for all his kind to be able to walk on two legs. Surrounded by animals, Lugi asks to fly out of the pit and a pterodactyl appears to rescue them, taking the three of them to the top of the fortress. Even so, the alligators manage to escape from the pit and start climbing the wall to catch the three of them, forcing Lugi to wish for the power of telekinesis. With this, they manage to take down the crocodiles and begin to think about what to do when the pterodactyl unleashes a dark lick right on Lugi's head. Tired, the boy asks to go home and starts arguing with his brothers about what to do. During the conversation, Laser says that they should be smarter with their requests and Lugi asks one of them to become a super genius, but unluckily for him, the one who receives this gift is the baby, who learns to speak by telepathy. After another wrong wish, Laser takes the stone from Lugi and goes outside, where he wishes for a catapult to throw the magical object away, causing it to fall where Toe found it. After hanging up on her ex-boyfriend, Stacy goes to her job, where she has to tutor Nose, an old friend of Toe's, in math. Since Dr. Noseworthy, the boy's father, is terrified of germs, the house is all covered and has a decontaminator on the door, which everyone has to pass through. At the entrance, Stacy finds her brother's magic stone and goes through the decontaminator. While she's cleaning up, Nose goes to his father to borrow his scientific calculator. Taking advantage of Noseworthy turning around to look for the object, Nose begins to wipe the slime from his nose and throws it away, causing a piece of slime to fall on one of his father's experiments. Nose tries to warn the man, but is afraid of being scolded for his lack of hygiene and gives up. After taking the calculator, the boy goes to Stacy and is mesmerized by the magic stone. Realizing this, the girl tells him he can keep the object and starts talking about Noseworthy, which makes Nose wish her father's inventions would work. As soon as he makes this request, the slime he left behind in the lab starts to replicate itself and gets bigger and bigger, coming to life. Outside, Toe and Lugi arrive at the entrance and ask to talk, but Nose refuses, saying that it's been a year since Toe came to visit. After apologizing, Little Thompson says he's lost something very important and describes the magic stone, but Nose says he doesn't know anything about it and hangs up on him, which makes the two boys very suspicious. In the laboratory, the mutant slime breaks the glass and begins to roam freely around the house. In the living room, Nose hears the noise and thinks his father has been asleep while he was experimenting. Certain that Nose was lying, Toe breaks the glass and enters the house with the Lugi but they are caught by the scientist who begins to clean them up. In the laboratory, Nose encounters the twisted slime that begins to chase him. In the corridor, Stacy arrives to confront her brother when Nose comes out of the lab talking about the walking slime. Seeing the stone in the boy's hand, Toe and Lugi try to pick it up, which sends the object flying down the corridor. At that moment, the hooded lamb comes out of the laboratory and swallows the magic stone. On seeing the monster, Noseworthy activates a glass barrier that prevents it from continuing after them, 
but the amoeba manages to destroy the obstacle and begins to chase Nose, wanting revenge for his slime friends who were eaten by the boy. While everyone rushes to the decontamination chamber, the scientist jumps over the mess and goes to the lab to get the cell counter. Downstairs, the group reaches the decontaminator and manages to escape, but Toe needs to retrieve the stone and runs into the creature, being captured in the process. With Toe about to be captured, Nose pulls a snot out of his nose and threatens to eat it, succeeding in getting giant slime to release the boy. In this way, they manage to pass through the decontamination chamber and head for the exit, but the slime is still after them. While running, Nose hits the postbox head on and falls into a mud puddle. Because of this, he falls behind and is almost devoured by the monster, but is saved by his father who appears at the last second, using his gun to trap the creature in a small cylinder. After retrieving the magic stone, Lugi and Toe take off running. It is then revealed that the night before, everything was ready for Mr. Black's party, where one of the Thompsons would become a partner in the firm. While he's getting ready, Alan sends Jane a kiss by text even though he's in the same room as her, which makes her realize how disconnected they are because of technology. After a short argument, Jane goes to say goodbye to her son and realizes that he is asleep. Just then, Toe receives an SMS from Helvetica and Jane goes over to read it, but is prevented by her son, who wakes up just then. To disguise it, Jane pretends to be picking up her makeup and throws the magic stone into her handbag. After Jane leaves, Lugi calls Toe to talk about the UFOs at school, claiming that he knows he got the aliens because of the magic stone. Wanting it back, Lugi asks where Toe kept it and the boy finally realizes that his mother took it. At the entrance to the party, Jane reminisces about her honeymoon and tells Alan that they could have that experience again, a moment alone without technology, but her husband is busy answering a call and doesn't even notice when Jane falls. After getting up, the woman says she wants them to be closer, which activates the magic stone and makes the two of them literally stick together. Afraid of being seen, the couple throw themselves into a nearby bush and Jane drops her handbag, which is found by Helvetica. Unaware that the stone is inside, Toe scares the girl and get hit in the face with the bag. After being scolded by her father, Helvetica takes Toe to the kitchen where she gives him some ice. With that done, the girl asks why Toe has come to the party and the boy says he wants his mother's purse back, but only takes the stone and tries to run away. Helvetica tries to hold Toe back to stop him from leaving, but the boy ends up telling her to release the magic stone. Upon learning that the object has powers, the girl begins to ask how it works when Cole appears and sticks Toe's head in the garbage can. Angrily, the girl says that her brother is a lunatic and wishes he would turn into a beetle. Watching from the window, Jane sees Cole turning into an insect and decides to join the party to get the stone, even though she shares the body with her husband. In the kitchen, Toe gets up with the garbage can over his head and bumps into Helvetica, who drops the stone on a tray that is taken away by the waiter. While Jane and Alan search for the stone, Helvetica and Toe also set off in search of the object. In the room, Mr. Black begins his speech by talking about the black box and says that the future of the company is in the hands of the leaders of the A and B team, calling on the Thompsons. As the two walk up to him, Mr. Black picks up the stone, thinking it's a peanut, and asks them to separate. Since the couple can't do it, Carbonus says it's good to keep the enemies together and says he wishes everyone there had the mentality of flying at their rivals' throats, which makes everyone attack each other. Including the waiter, who knocks the stone out of his hands. Desperate, Jane and Alan throw themselves on the floor and grab the stone, but Helvetica steals it before they can make a wish. Excited, the girl tries to tell her father about her powers, but Carbonus gets annoyed by the mess and blames his daughter for everything, shouting at her. Irritated, the girl asks her father to listen to her at least once, which makes Mr. Black have a gigantic ear. In the next request, Helvetica asks for her plaster to disappear in a rocket bike, as well as making her dental braces disappear. With the ghost biker's vehicle, the girl runs off with the stone while Jane and Alan get on a bike to chase her. After a few meters, Helvetica ends up hitting a curb and falling headfirst into a garbage can. In the fall, the girl knocks over the magic stone, which rolls back to the black mansion. Alone, Carbonus picks up the object to make a request, but ends up being knocked down by the people who continue to fight. To end the confusion, Toe takes the stone and wishes for everyone to return to normal, causing his parents to separate and Cole to return to human form. With that done, the boy goes outside and throws the stone away, causing it to fall in front of Mr. Noseworthy's house, where Stacy will find it the next morning. After the confusion with the boy, Toe uses the stone to remove his plaster, but loses the object to Helvetica before he can make a second request. At that moment, the black box security guards appear and order them to release the stone, but Nose refuses to allow Mr. Black to take the object and steals it from Helvetica's hands, wanting to fly. Instead, 
The stone turns the boy into a pigeon that can't run away under the weight. After taking the magic stone, Laser runs into a house and wishes he had long arms to prevent the others from stealing the stone, but Helvetica is smarter and goes up to the second floor to get it. The girl then wants to become invisible and starts to run away, but the others can see the stone floating and go after her. Because of his long arms, Laser is able to hold Helvetica and take the stone, making both of their powers disappear. When it becomes visible, Helvetica hits Laser, who drops the magic object on Mr. Black's feet. Now that he has the artifact, the businessman fires all his employees and wants a giant pile of money. Using her wits, Helvetica manages to trick her father into wishing the pile of money would disappear, causing Carbonus to hang in the stone to stop in the middle of the street. When he picks up the object, one of the security guards tells him that he can now order whatever he wants and Toe realizes that the greed of the adults is going to ruin everything, so the children join forces to stop them. In his first request, the security guard is about to ask to turn into something and is stopped by Helvetica, who touches the stone and wishes him to become a sausage. Just then, Stacy's boyfriend appears the size of a colossus and rescues Carbonus, who finally retrieves the stone. The man then asks to be transformed into the most powerful thing in the world and the black box becomes a super powerful suit of armor, spreading chaos throughout the city. To stop her father, Helvetica turns into a giant wasp and Cole becomes a huge beetle, fighting Carbonus together. To help, Toe wants his alien friends back and Lugi asks for his army of bipedal crocodiles. Even fighting alone against an army, the Iron Golem manages to throw a crocodile away, causing the animal to fly towards the telepathic baby, who uses telekinesis to stop the predator in midair. With her powers, the girl says that the humans have angered the magic stone and that's why she's going to reverse the orders, making everyone go back to normal. The baby then says they should get rid of the stone and Dr. Noseworthy says he has the right invention for that. The scientist distributes a mess of germs to everyone and asks them to join hands, combining their energies to make the magic stone disappear, causing the storm to return to Black Falls. Now that the mess is over, Alan and Jane say they can help rebuild the city, but only if everyone can work as a team, which Carbonus agrees to. At the same time, Helvetica and Toe also decide to make up and become friends with Braces. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.